Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Quantum Healing with Candace show. It is August 7th, 2017, and it's my birthday. Not only that, it's the lunar eclipse and the first day of the gateway, the solar um, the eclipse gateway, that whole corridor, right? And it's some crazy energy, and I've had a fabulous day. And I was just telling my good friends, Katya Turner and Andrew Martin, that we're just going to kind of continue the party here and invite you all on Facebook to listen. This show is sponsored by In5D.com. And before we get going, I just want to thank Greg Prescott, as always, for sponsoring this show and making it possible. Hi, everybody. Hi, Katya. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Hi, Candice. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. So my friends, both of them are Ascension Guides and Energy Intuitives, and Katya calls herself an indigo, and I've invited them today for a few reasons. Katya and I go way back, and we're really good friends. Andrew and I are new good friends, uh, new friends, and we're having both of them speak at the Quantum Healing 5D and Beyond conference in Sarasota, Florida, the one that Michelle Walling and I are putting on in October. And so I thought it would be fun to have you both on the show is in preparation for that. And I wanna ask you how you all got to know each other, how you connected. And I think I thought that would be a great story because I knew Katya for many years and then I just knew Andrew kind of separately. And it was one day, and I love this fact that you're in the middle of another move because because Andrew, I first knew that you two knew each other when I was listening to your show and you were talking about connecting with Katya about moving and that whole thing. And you were saying, my good friend Katya. And I was like, what? And then all these connections started happening. And I wanna know uh, more about connections and especially how you two first got connected. So whoever wants to start, would you let us know? I'm well, trying to remember, was it, were you a client first? Yes, I remember it was, I think it was summer 2015. It was, oh my gosh, I remember our first session was on uh, summer solstice. It was June 21st, wow. 2015. I remember that date really good. And I found you uh, on Facebook. I found your videos on Facebook. And back then I was still vibing so high after being pregnant with Mia. Like, I didn't feel like I needed any guidance, anything whatsoever. But it was one of those moments when I looked at your video and I knew I had to book a session. And not only that, it was one of those moments that, you know, what we have with our soul family whenever we meet somebody. And it's like, I don't know anything about you, but I know everything about you. Yeah. Kind of deal. So I'm like, I have to book a session. And I remember <laughs> that first session we had, I'm like, I told you. You know, I have no idea why I'm here. <laughs> so <laughs> let's talk. <laughs> it was a clear guidance that I needed to do this. And there I am. Yeah, I remember, you know, I remember working together, but I couldn't remember if we knew each other before or if, but now I remember. Um, and you know how it is, like trying to act, trying to figure out when something happened or where or how is just, you know, a little blurry. But uh, I do remember, and I remember specifically pretty early on, you know, there's clients that occasionally, and you were definitely one of them, where it becomes very clear to me right away after a couple of sessions, or even sometimes the first one, I'm like, she doesn't really need me. Like she, there's a connection here that she's already inherent. Like she just needs maybe someone to sort of clear out some cobwebs or help her, you know, sort of make that connection more clear. But um, yeah, then it was like- we have cleared with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I would have done without you in my dark night of the soul. <laughs> yeah, and then it wasn't long after that, you know, you and I became friends and then we started trading readings for each other and became more colleagues. And now it's like, we'll check in with each each other every once in a while on Facebook and they're like, oh my God, what's going on? Oh yeah, we have to have a conversation and we'll connect and really just sort of share with each other. Um, but yeah, it was, she was a client first, and at least think, in this lifetime. Right. The coolest thing to me about this whole relationship, and this has never happened to me with anybody else really at all. And I've had a lot of those encounters with what I know to be my soul family. But with him, I think we, I don't know, we knew each other for about six months. And then both of us saw each other in dreams, in visions. Mm -hmm. uh, we realized on what councils we have been on together, are on. It's like 
we got actual conscious remembrances of why we are here right now together in this lifetime. This is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. And you, Katja, actually, Katja was one of the first people that triggered that within me because, you know, it's like we read so often of these, like, these are the things that will happen during your awakening. And this is the one of the things you may expect during the ascension. And none of those things ever happened to me. Like, I was never having these, you know, I was never visited by orbs. I was never having these, you know, my, my experience was kind of mundane, really. But Katja was one of those people that I remember having these weird dreams or like she would just be in my awareness. It's like almost like she was like knocking on the door being like, hey, Andrew, I have a message for you. And I'd be like, out of the blue, <laughs> some vision would come in or something with Katja related to it. And yeah, it was a really rapid acceleration, I think, for both of us. When we met, it was definitely one of those like we definitely held codes for each other for sure. Yeah, I remember that right after the first session I had with you, I had the craziest of the downloads. I mean, it was just like electricity stream, like I had to lay down. It was so cool. Yeah. But now, fast forward to what are we, 2017, <clears throat> I honestly feel like I have a brother of sorts. Mm -hmm. Like, it's that kind of a feeling of family yeah. that I barely have with my blood family. It's really cool. And it's like, we can connect, you know, once a month or, twi or once every couple of months. And it's like one of those connections that you know never goes away like we can talk and probably not talk for years and then still pick up right right where yeah. we start well i just love this so much and you know i didn't know that about the dreams and i actually had a dream about andrew a few days ago and it <laughs> weirded me out i mean it weirded me out because and i wrote him about it and he gave me permission to talk about it I, I have these dreams that I call the park bench series. Um, it's just my, my own deal where I have these dreams and the park bench is always my cue that it's not a regular dream, that it's usually um, after death spirit guide kind of, um, you know, meetups. I've met relatives or I've met Dolores Cannon there, you know, I, that's the place where I have these, you know, these upper level things. And so, there I was and there's the park bench and I'm walking up to it and Andrew's sitting on it and I'm really going, what the hell is he doing here? Because he's alive and he's a human being and what the hell? And it was so funny and he, he was that wonderful laugh and he kept laughing about it. And, and I'm like, what are you doing here? This is, this is just strange. And he says, well, maybe I have something for you, you know? And then he did this. He like pointed up in the air and there were thought bubbles and there were little movies going on and he was like well you know some of my experiences like that one or maybe that one over there maybe maybe you could use those and then i started because i was still reacting to him like he's a human i started thinking you know because we did we all do the therapy and the guidance and stuff so there's this privacy thing and i'm like whoa whoa wait a second privacy privacy i'm not supposed to know what you're <laughs> what your messages are and then he laughed even harder and he said, no, 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 I'm putting this out there. Like that's, that's like for everybody, to, not just you. I'm not doing this just for you. This is for everybody to sort of use, to learn from. And it was amazing. And then, then he laughed really hard and he said, this is multidimensionality. And I'm actually buzzing right now when I'm thinking about it because I, from the beginning, I loved your connection and I wanted to talk about connection and that's a connection, right? That's a real multidimensional connection. You know, and it's funny when you sent me that uh, message on Facebook because it hasn't happened in a while, but there was a period last year where it was like I was getting emails out of the blue from people saying you were in my dream last night or from one woman, I remember very clearly, it was about this time last year, saying that she had been dreaming about me before she even knew who I was. And she was like, there was this guy showing up in my dream. I didn't know who he was. I had never met you before. And then I saw you on Facebook one day or YouTube or something. And she said, and I just completely like, what? <laughs> she said, so I, I mean, I have no conscious understanding of this. You know, I was happy to meet you in dream time, but you know, it wasn't anything that I ever have a recollection of. So I love those stories and I'm so happy that you shared it with me. I think it's super cool. <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks so much. And you know, <laughs> speaking of connections, Katya, you know, mine and our connection with Dolores Cannon, and I just have to say, you know, this picture, this one right here, this is, <clears throat> those of you out there who see this photograph of Dolores Cannon around, it's the only professional photograph that I'm aware of that was ever taken of this woman. 
and Katya took it. And when I put on this shirt today with the little tie, I swear to God, I thought about her. <laughs> That's so, so cool. And then, you know, and then, of course, uh, Cherokee, who did, you know, a bunch of the video work with all of us. When, and then we, we worked together and then Dolores passed and then it was like this. But, but our connection, we, we kept our connection, didn't we? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing like that soul connection. It's the same soul connection how like me and Cherokee, right, in our crazy twin whatever relationship, we will be so mad at each other and we will be ready to cut each other's throats. But then we understand that the actual relationship is going on way beyond any of these physical happenings and physical people and personalities. That's like, that's the connection that's making it all happen. The same with all of us, really. That's beautiful. And, you know, we all kind of, I was thinking, <clears throat> we all have our own little tribes. We have, you know, this tribe and this tribe and this tribe, and then there's overlap. And, and I was thinking about the internet and how amazing this tool is that, that we're able to make these really close connections, but then to really meet and see each other in person, that's a, that's going to be another level and an amazing deepening, I, I think, of of that connection and I just I, I've already said I, I literally want to know when your flights come in because whenever it is you guys see each other I think it needs you to be see it. <laughs> <laughs> we should broadcast it live. <laughs> that, that's going to be a Facebook live if I've ever seen one because I think if I've ever seen like a light stream like you were talking about the electricity that's I think that's what I'm going to see when I see you two together. That's hilarious. Yeah, we may cause a, like a power outage in the airport or something. <laughs> <laughs> and the cool thing I wanted to mention about how you're saying like little tribes overlapping here and there. I remember whenever I was a kid, it was like a game I played in my head. I was very connected with so many various kinds of people, right? Like I had a very broad circle of friends that were very different people. And it gave me the greatest feeling to overlap these little tribes. And how, to me, how that felt. It's as if uh, my diamond around me is becoming more whole. It's like, not only it's like this diamond that's that i am right the multifaceted diamond and now i'm expanding it outward and completing it like making it solid so very interesting so yeah i, I dig the feeling yeah it's beautiful and it's so amazing right now to see all of these realities kind of converging and sort of careening into one another and i you know i've been you know recently made the decision to go back to san francisco and i have been trying this is the third time that i've tried to move back I, in 2014, I think I had plans that ended up falling through the beginning of this year or the beginning of last or end of last year. I was thinking that I would and that, that ended up falling through. And now this is like the third time. And I very clearly am aware that, you know, I think as we're sort of hopping through these realities in this timeline, there's a part of me that has always been there sort of calling me back, but it just hasn't been the time. Um, and it's so amazing to sort of now feel the resonance. And I hear that 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 sort of call much clearer now than I ever did before. And I'm, I was thinking about it today. I was like, oh, well, that makes sense. Like there's always been this timeline ready for me kind of waiting, but it just wasn't the right time. Uh, and to now be able to sort of trust it and to move into it, man, just having made the decision not even a week ago, it's like things are already, I can feel it. Like it's harnessed me and it's pulling me to it. It's pretty incredible. It's pretty incredible. You know, you know I have to say, cause I heard you say this, on, on one of your shows. And when I heard you say you were moving, I was waiting for you to say that Katya told you again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want to know the, the crazy thing and let this be recorded live. <laughs> they talked to you. Actually, ever since you posted that thing about San Francisco, first of all, when I saw that post, I was like, what timeline are we in? Like, <laughs> what's going on? But then the more and the more that I sit with that feeling, <laughs> Like you're gonna end up in New York, and that San Francisco is gonna be as brief. That right, is hilarious. As everything, like these little chunks that are happening. I don't know why, as always, but this is just a feeling. <laughs> Wouldn't that be hilarious if I kept is hopping right. back and forth from but coast in to the coast? End, who cares? You yeah. know, if if you're having fun, if you're doing what you want, and if you feel like your life is moving you to greater fulfillment, but who the fuck cares how you're exactly. going to pop it? You know, whether you're going to be in Europe or San Francisco or New York, and if you're going to be there for a year or a week or a month. Yeah, who knows? It's the, I mean, it's the freaking ride of a lifetime, yeah. for sure. And I feel like finally, I don't know, especially like with me, I don't know with you guys, but 
this chunk of time, like from this crazy acceleration, uh, probably in the last month, I feel like I'm finally riding the higher uh, mm -hmm. waves of intensity. You know what I'm saying? How these yeah. energies are always super intense whenever they push you forward really, high, really, really hard. This time it's like finally we're on this level. We don't need to like spiral down <laughs> to touch something really deep to finally like put us out. And then... Yeah, I feel the same way. And it's in many ways I feel that that's what coming back to New York was about was really like releasing that sort of lower timeline because there, you know, there's a lot of reasons now I see why I came back that I've really sort of cleared and made peace with. And it was this realization of the day of like, oh, like I don't have to really my path and my future isn't really determined so much by my purpose as it used to be because I feel like there's been this merging now that's happened with me and the higher aspects that I've been working with that now it's like I can come to the table and say okay I want to live in San Francisco I want to move back to the west coast and these are the things I'm going to do so you all are going to have to figure out how that works and you all are going to have to figure out how to build my purpose around that because this is what I'm ready for and at depth for the first time in a long time I feel this sense of clarity and ease where yeah, I just sort of slide into, someone was talking the other day um, about the eclipse being the sideways elevator. And I love that metaphor, how I feel like I'm just sort of sliding into another reality that's still ready just to take me forward. Yeah. When do you think, you guys, because I have, sometimes I have clients um, who have some very strange time anomaly things happen example i had a woman come in this was even a, a while back and to her credit she was able to keep it together you know out there in the world and not tell very many people but she would have this kind of a life where she would go to sleep and sometimes she would wake up in a completely different physical form with another name and another life and everything and it would she said it would always take her a couple days to go, oh yeah, now I'm, you know, Mary instead of Sue. I'm married to this guy or, you know, I have that job instead of whatever. Wow. And then she would have that life for a while and she never knew when, it was either weeks or months, she would go back to sleep and she would wake up back as the first person who had no time passing. And she had to do the same thing. She had to remember where she left off on that. And when we did this session, this Dolores Cannon session, we found out that the higher self said, yes, she's one of the forerunners on this multidimensional life thing. And she's able to manage that. And she's just one of the first. But this will become something that all of you can do eventually. And when you were talking earlier, even before the show began, Andrew, about looking out the window and thinking that was San Francisco and it was really <laughs> New York, I started thinking about some of that, about how these are these timelines that we actually – aren't just really jumping anymore and being on separate ones. We're sort of melding some of them, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. And I haven't experienced, you know, when I was at the gym a couple of days ago um, and I was having, it was after I decided to move back to San Francisco and I literally thought that I was there and I was watching the news and I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't look like I don't, I've never seen that neighborhood in San Francisco before. What's going on? And then I would say, you know, downtown Manhattan. And I'm like, Oh no, wait, no, I'm not in San Francisco. It was so strange. And I've never had the experience. I remember last year when I was working on my new website, and I think I had talked to you about this, Katya. There was a period where, you know, my old website, I had like 400 and something blog posts. And the, the website that I, the web hoster, um, the web hosting that I was using before didn't have an export function. So I literally had to cut and paste 400 something blog posts and move them to my new, new blog manually. And there was a day where, I just said, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do as much as I can. And before I knew it, I looked at the clock and it was like three hours later and I had done every single blog post. And it was the weirdest thing. And I was like, what the heck just happened? It is physically impossible that I just, it's a numbers game. Like I can't do that many blog posts in that short of time. And so I was like, what's going on? So I sort of took a minute and got quiet and connected and was like, tell me what's going on. And my guide said, this was a multidimensional experience. What you did was you moved yourself out of time 
And when you're out of time and you're still working in on, you know, on a project or something that's a physical thing, you can do it outside of time. And so they showed me it's like an upside down pyramid. And so here I am at the bottom of the pyramid, Andrew, in sort of his 3D linear time life. And then I moved myself up out of that and sort of to the fat, you know, the, the broad part of the pyramid, got a whole bunch of stuff done. And then you sort of reinsert the experience back in. And it was the weirdest thing because I literally, it was like at the end of three hours, I was just like, wait, where have I been? It was this sense of being out of my experience that was nowhere near like waking up in another body. And I can imagine what that would be like to wake up in another lifetime. But that was the closest that I've ever gotten to something like that. And it was a very real experience of sort of taking myself out and then being plugged back in. It was very interesting. Katya, have you had anything like that happen? Compressed time or anything? Well, I have lately in the last couple of times I have had these experiences of like really conscious understanding that I woke up in another timeline based on how I feel and what cycles I feel like are running. So yeah, I've had those experiences. I've had like um, missing time which was interestingly connected with the location feeling. We too, me and Andrew talked about this, whenever all of a sudden I was driving in the car and I felt like I was driving to the beach all of a sudden. It's like, I know I'm driving my kids to the beach someplace. I don't remember, I think it was Hawaii again. And I was like, but wait, but I'm in Arkansas, you know, and there I look at the clock and I have literally an hour missing from, I just left home. Like, so, but the interesting part was, and I've had this location feeling a couple of times and for the most part, it was the Hawaii, Hawaii location. And two, for the longest time, I thought that we were going to move there and I kind of wanted to move there. But now for some reason, looking back, I more and more look at it um, like mm, some sort of, you know, synesthesia, right? How we feel the same energy signatures in different objects, different places, different situations, scenarios it's all the same feeling, but it's manifested in different physical form, right? So it's kind of like that. Uh, I feel like it's just some sort of code inside that we're tapping into, right? That is like, I talked about this on my last call that I had, like I see it in my head as like this equation, like mathematical equation that is represented by a physical thing. And you can see the same mathematical equation in a plant, in a person, in a feeling, in a location, in a situation, in a cycle, like everything is built up on these equations. And so whenever we tap into that equation inside of ourselves, all of a sudden we can feel the location, the, the people, you know, and whatever is it that's coming to us, it's, you know, based upon the situation or I don't know. I really don't know what it's based upon, but uh, that's kind of how I see it too. So when I have those experiences now, way more so than before, I don't really think about them anymore. It's like some, some person inside of my head who wanted answers doesn't anymore. He just enjoys life. <laughs> <laughs> I have the same experience. There's a place in my neighborhood where I get off the subway and it's the same spot. Every single time that I walk by this place, I get like a bit of vertigo every single time. And I know that there's some sort of vortex or some sort of interdimensional experience that's happening, either moving into another timeline or out of one. And it happens every single time I get off the train at the exact same space. And I know that whenever I get vertigo, that it's me sort of switching out in and out of a timeline very, very quickly. So I don't know which, I'm, I don't know if I'm moving out of one when I come here or if I'm moving into one when I come here, but it's a very, very real sense of being connected to a new level of reality. Um, and it's kind of the same thing. Now I think, you know, I'm just sort of, I've become so used to, or so comfortable, I guess I would say, with these experiences that it's sort of an awareness that I go, oh, that's cool. Okay, how interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I've... Luckily, I think I'm finally at a place where I stopped trying to make sense of any of it because I think it would make me crazy. <laughs> right. I love that about this life right now, that we can talk about this kind of thing and we can shrug our shoulders at some of it because, I, you know, I really wonder and, and I, my heart kind of goes out to those who are just now waking up to some of this or who feel like they can't talk about it. And they may have some of these experiences and they may really be thrown for a loop. Um, you know, feeling like um, something's strange going on in their head. I, not even that long ago, I actually was in a cab 
And then this wonderful black man, beautiful black man was talking to me and had this amazing uh, velvet black skin and this great accent. And I was asking him, where are you from? And he said, you know, Ethiopia. And um, I was asking him about his family and he was just such an interesting fellow. And he was just pulling up to the airport to, to drop me off. And as, um, as he's dropping me off, I, I watch my mouth say something that my conscious brain did not plan on or, or um, have any reason to say. And I look at that man and you know what I say to him? I say, huh, I said, you know what? I just had my DNA tested and I found out that my primary lineage is from Sub-Saharan Africa. I can't imagine your reaction. Oh my God. And he goes, oh, that's interesting. And inside, I'm having this conversation where I'm going, oh my God, I have just lost my mind. Because where did that come from? So I had this, this conversation and I'm like, why did you say that? I don't know. What were you trying to do, impress him? You don't do stuff like that. You're never going to see him again. Why would you say that? Now, the thing was, is guess what? I did have one of those swab things just for fun. This is actually was like three years ago and I hadn't gotten the test results back yet. And I still, and, and I mean, I, I hadn't. And I went through security. I sat down, I put on my shoes and I was still trying to recover because I was freaked out. I, I was like watching my mouth say those words. And I'm like, what, where'd that come from? I was trying to distract myself that that thing just happened by looking at my email. I got an email from the DNA results and my primary lineage is sub-Saharan African. And then that took me down a whole nother rabbit hole, which was, how can that be? I've got blood. <laughs> I called them up. I'm like, wait a second. Now look, it's not that I'm upset. I'm just trying to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> so that I found out a little bit more about that. So what that was, was direct, um, higher self speaking so that my my physicality and my conscious mind could see that I could be just put aside and that larger part of me could just start, you know, take care of the vehicle to run run the show and even my voice when I wasn't planning on it and it came from no space of ego or personality. It came from a completely different place. Yeah. Yeah. And isn't it interesting how those situations will happen and oftentimes at the time we don't know why it's happening but then we get clarity afterward like i remember this was a couple of years ago maybe two or three years ago now where i did a very brief period where i was channeling um my higher self and i was channeling you know doing the sort of trance channel like i would sort of revert re, you know recede and my eyes would do weird things and my voice would sort of change but it was very brief i only did it for about six months that i had these sessions available and i did one live event in seattle where i did an evening of channeled wisdom and it then it was gone. And I always wondered like, why was that so brief? And it was the same thing. It was like, well, this was really to teach you and really teach your conscious mind. This is never for the higher self. This is always for the human self, the conscious, um, the sort of human walking conscious ego mind self. And it was, a, it was really giving myself that experience so that I could trust that when I did do that, that everything would be fine and that the information would, so, would still flow and it wasn't about my mind needing to have a script of what it was going to say when I showed up. Um, so yeah, it's so weird to have those experiences. And I guess really, I think for anybody listening who's maybe not sure, I guess for me, it really just comes down at some point, you just start to trust it and you stop questioning it. And you just say, okay, well, that's what it needed to be. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense to my mind. <laughs> yeah. I wonder, what do you guys think? Because I think this, I think the more that we do this, so this is, you know, I, I thought of this as a connection show, your connection to each other, our connection to, to each other, um, our tribe's connection to each other, and then going down to Sarasota and connecting there. I really wonder about going to these kinds of events and spending time like that or spending just deep time um, in any way. Andrew, I was on your call last night and spending time with that group. I'm wondering if that kind of connecting with people like that, if, if it builds that, that multidimensional connection for each of us. What do you guys think? I don't know. I think of all things, it will build that trust that we were just talking about. 
the more that we, you know, follow our little gut feeling about the people around us and the more that we connect and the more that we bounce off of each other because we connect, you know, based on the law of attraction anyway. Like we connect based upon our vibes. And so the more that we open ourselves up to that and the more that we show up for these connections, the more ultimately trust in ourselves we're going to develop. Yeah. And I think, you know, for me, it's been doing, you know, talking about the call yesterday, um, it builds trust in me, in myself. And in, you know, when I started doing the sound, the toning and the sound frequency stuff, um, I didn't know what that was about. And it felt really weird at first. And even when I'm doing it, I will oftentimes my mind, because I was, you know, I have a musical background. I took music lessons as a kid and both my parents are musicians. So I have a very, you know, Know, basic understanding of music and it's something that I'm familiar with so my mind will almost always when I'm singing a note my mind will almost always have another note that it thinks should be the next one and it's almost never the, the note that actually comes out of my mouth next but I think it does I think what we do is we create this this connection of energy that builds the connect you know I think it does a couple things I think for the conscious mind it does build trust for the conscious mind it gives the ego a way to sort of build context around it so it goes oh okay the last five times we've done this nothing scary happened and it was an okay thing so we can show up for this again but I think for the higher levels of awareness and for the energy bodies and all of that it does strengthen those connections and it does create a place where I don't know I kind of see it like you know it's like you would go to the trainer for your body you go to these groups for your energy levels of you know non-physical self to learn how to train it and to really learn how to use those muscles more consciously and katya you have calls that you call purpose calls the same sort of thing happens in those i imagine yeah we talk a lot about you know finding one's purpose we talk a lot a lot about how we go about finding it <clears throat> now, these days because as my life shifted a lot and how I see generally the whole concept of spirituality and how we use it, um, this is also, you know, it presents itself differently in how I explain it to people and stuff. And, and it's always super fun and it's always something new even for me, you know? And the last batch of calls we had was really cool because first of all, I made them free and they were all full and it was a whole, like the, the, range of people who showed up was so much broader than a usual call which was really interesting to converse with and then um i just i uncover something new every time about this work and about myself through communication with people who come to me right to just chat or for answers or whatever they're seeking uh yeah so as far as those calls i look at them more as like I don't know, my playground, like my discovery, <laughs> a little totally. box, I don't know. <laughs> it's like a laboratory yeah. where we can just experiment. And I think that, and I don't know about you, Katya, but I would assume that it's similar. I think being what I really see now is, you know, sort of being like a guide in human form or being a person who is sort of helping, maybe carrying the torch on his own path. So that maybe behind me or people who are parallel to me have some light. You know, I, I like the lighthouse analogy um, because I still don't know what to call myself. You know, it's like I, I people ask me, what do I do? And I'm like, I don't really know. <laughs> I just show up and talk. Um, but my hope has always been that, you know, and what I see now through this context is that I think that a lot of us who are on the path in this way, stepping forth as these new leaders or people who help illuminate, we tend to go through things a little bit sooner. Mm -hmm. or a little bit before the other people that the, the groups that we work with so that I can share my experience and say, yeah. Hey, yeah, I've been through that. I remember when it was like that. I know what it likes to feel, what it's like to feel that. I know what it's like to feel completely upended and not know which end is up and look at your life, you know, <laughs> like it's chaos and look at yourself like you're a crazy person. And trust me, I can also say from experience that there is clarity at points along the way. So for me, yeah, it's just a way to connect to people and just share. You know, I share my own experiences, not because I like to talk about myself, but because I like to really, you know, I'm not a guru. Like I'm not on a pedestal anywhere. I'm just my own person doing things in my own way. And my job is to share that in the hopes that maybe it will make someone else's path a little bit easier. 
There you go. And I think this is exactly like, I want to stress this so much for everybody who is watching this, like our connection was facilitated by specifically that you one day getting off of your ass and, and recording a video, right? About your experience. This is what triggered. The, and I mean, now the, the solidity of our connection, like even though we've never met in person is crazy. It's still mind boggling to me. I still don't fully understand it. Not now, now that I'm not even trying, but still, you know, it's so incredibly solid way more solid than a lot of connections out there in the physical world. And it would have never happened if you didn't share your story, if you didn't show up to share. And like yeah. you're saying, like get, get this byproduct of the growth that you're doing out of yourself and into for whoever finds it. And I feel like this is, you know, for a lot of you guys watching, it's so incredibly important. If you feel the call to share, don't constrict yourself like be scared but share anyway because it can a change lives of other people like all the work that you are doing in a year two or ten somebody else can watch your video and accomplish in a day or a week right now in these kind of energies it is so incredibly helpful but then it facilitates these kinds of connections that are out of this world literally yeah <laughs> <laughs> And they don't have to be huge. You know, you don't even have to do this live or anything. Let's take, let's go back to that park bench thing. You know, you can be sitting on a park bench or a subway stop and, and have that connection with somebody else. And sometimes, you know, even maybe sometimes not with words uh, that, you know, another thing is happening uh, in my sessions and out there. Ooh, I'm getting chills with that. Sometimes if you just send loving, supportive, just genuine thoughts without words, um, it's it's really powerful and more and more people are feeling it accepting it and it's helping change them just looks with the eyes right yeah mm -hmm. yeah and I think that you're right uh, to just you know just let your agenda be to share and connect like mm -hmm. you don't have to share you don't have to start a blog or a YouTube channel or a website or anything with the intention or the goal of becoming you know a, a you know YouTube star or becoming a healer and energy you know so it can just be like, hey, I'm having a weird, crazy experience, and I just want to share that. And it can be, you know, this is, and this is the beautiful thing is this spiritual experience, this awakening that is happening within all of us on some level is shaking up everybody. So this is from, you know, the person who works at the sandwich counter to the person who's the CEO of a, you know, multinational billion dollar corporation. Everyone is having this awakening or will have this awakening in some way if they choose to stay. And it's just then just be awake, have your experience where you are and as you are. It doesn't mean that everyone's all of a sudden going to quit their job, get a turban and a crystal ball and start to, you know what I mean? Like this is how we create a conscious planet. So we're still going to need people to do certain jobs and we're still going to have space for bankers and artists and musicians and, you know, teachers and all of that. So it's not about necessarily changing what you do or who you are. It's just sharing where you are. And I guarantee you that there's at least one other person that will relate. And that's why I started my YouTube channel back in the day was like, I just got to share this. Like, I can't be the only one who's having this crazy experience of my life turned upside down. And I just got to find a way so that I didn't feel like a voice in the desert. Yeah, I remember I started sharing for the same reason. I, I physically felt such a heavy sensation on my chest. And I knew all of these... Mm, all of these bits of knowledge and stuff that I've always had, that I've always had that I thought I was crazy, right? All of a sudden they all started kind of rising up and I knew that they were valid now. And it's like, I needed to get them out for my own health, for my, like for the sake of relief for myself. So I remember I wrote that post about telepathy. Like I'm a branding person. I would sit normally and design a site and what is it going to be? With that, I just pulled up like the simplest theme that I could find for blogging. And it, it's like, I have to get it out. I didn't care how it looked like, what the name was. I have to have this out of myself now, or I feel like I'm dying under the weight of it, you know? Yeah. So yeah, and I all of it that. led to so much cool stuff. If back in the day, somebody told me what I would be doing and what I would be talking about right now, I'd be like, even back then when I actually started, I still was like, am I really like the who, who told me like, yeah, you should start doing this. I'm like, I yeah. don't know how to do this. Right. Totally. That was back in the day when we thought we had to have permission from somebody else, right? Yeah. You don't need permission from anybody anymore. And I love that. That's part of what, Andrew, the liberation timeline, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. 
it's not only the big things that um, it's the smaller things that are falling apart it, where control or a path or somebody telling you what you should or shouldn't do. That's just going away, isn't it? Yeah. And this idea that somehow, you know, the guides, the angels, the whatever it is that we perceive as this thing up there giving us the information or the instruction that it's somehow outside of us, number one. And number two, that now, you know, once you reach a certain level, it becomes very aware to me that I have access now to the same information that that level of awareness has access to. And I don't need their permission. And I don't, they don't get to tell me what to do. Like, I know now what my truth feels like. And I know when I am following that or when I am not. And I think that our guides show up to help get us towards that, directed towards that truth. But once we find it and learn how to listen to it and trust it, they're like, well, our work is done. Like, we'll be happy to, you know, advise or collaborate if you want, but you don't really need us in that way. And I think that all three of us, I think, are a good example of, you know, we came here, you know, I think we often felt like we needed permission because we came here to do something in a way that had never been done before. So there was no model for it. So we're always, you know, I know in the beginning, I was looking for a template of how do I do this and what do I do? And every time I would try to model myself on somebody else, you know, a psychic or a healer or whatever, it would always, you know, it would get me a little bit, maybe it would start me down a path, but it would eventually always fall apart. And I think that once I learned, you know, I went from fearing the fact that there was no model for it to loving that. Cause I was like, well, hell yeah. Now I can't do it wrong. I can't mess it up because no one can do this. No one else can do what Andrew can do, what Kachi can do, what Candace can do, what anyone else is watching can do. We have our own frequency and our own thumbprint, our spiritual thumbprint. So you're the only one that can do it. So get over the fact that there's even any concept of failure. How can you fail if there's no way to prove? Prove to me that I failed. You don't even know what, what I'm doing. <laughs> this was experience with me and motherhood. Like I went through life very consciously understanding that it's like anything new that I started, like I would start it kind of shaky hands, but then the next morning I wake up and I know exactly how to do it because I have felt this like, I have, I have collected these vibes, right? I have collected the blueprints, the templates, right? From other people. So it's like, I, I just know how to do stuff. Like I wake up and I just know what to do and how to do it. With motherhood, that never came. <laughs> <laughs> how I was terrified. I'm like, did you forget to download this? I literally would wake up every day when Mia was born. And I was like, where? Where is my manual? And then it, it continued into like this panic mode of like, what the hell? There is no manual, right? And now I'm definitely at the spot when I am loving it and like juicing everything because I understand that I'm creating something completely different and so much bigger and wider than any like ever been done before. It's crazy. But yeah, I, I feel you on that. <laughs> yeah. And no. it's really just, you You just have to trust it. You just have to learn how to trust it. That, yeah, like it's you like said. you have to learn to trust yourself because <clears throat> yeah. in the absence of a template, your own voice becomes really loud. And it's like, do you have the guts? Do you have the courage to listen to that voice and express the voice and not um, play by the template that you have downloaded? Yeah. All right. Well, I think this is a great place to end and um, to give this advice out there to others to follow their own truth, trust it. You know, we say these things all the time, but, um, but that's, that's really what it feels like inside when you're walking your own path. If, you know, if your feet don't fit in somebody else's footsteps, just, you know, there's just no reason to keep making, making yourself try to make that happen. And, and we all, nobody can do what Andrew can do, what Kajit can do, what I can do, and what you can do out there. Andrew, I love the way you put that. I want to thank you so much for joining me tonight and, and speaking um, with each other and with me. And I cannot wait until I see you all down in Sarasota in October. Ticket sales are great, but there's still tickets left. So those of you out there who want to uh, come on down and spend some time with us, it's a two-day event in Sarasota, October 6th and 7th. There's going to be uh, sound healing, a group regression, some light meditations, a whole day of speakers, meals are included, and then we're going to end Sunday with a beach drumming at sunset on the 99.9% .9 crystal sands of Sarasota um, uh, Siesta Key Beach. And I'm really looking forward to that. So thank you again, everyone, for showing up. And I want to thank Greg Prescott again.
for sponsoring this show, making it happen, Quantum Healing with Candice. Thank you, Michelle Walling, for putting on the Sarasota event with me as my partner. And that's all for tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I cannot wait for Florida event. Uh, we're going to have so much fun. <laughs> we're going to blow the fuse of that place. With all yeah, the we need to bring some <laughs> power generators. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great. Bye, everybody. Love you. Bye. Bye, guys.